The views and opinions expressed on this program are not necessarily those of this station, JVC Broadcasting Management, or its sponsors. This is Denise Nostrom, CEO and founder of Diversified Financial Solutions. Now more than ever, investment advice is needed. Not just where best to invest your money, but why. Are you investing for your future retirement? Are you retired and looking to maximize your income? Are you maximizing your income and concerned with leaving money for your loved ones? Are you investing for your retirement at the same time saving for your children's education and at the same time saving to buy another home? Are the markets in line with your goals? Are your goals ever changing? Please contact me at 631-758-8691. That's 631 631- one seven five eight eight six nine one, or visit us at diversifiedfinancial.biz. For over 25 years, I have been helping individuals, families, and business owners navigate through all market conditions with only one goal in mind, my clients. Visit me at diversifiedfinancial.biz or call Denise Snowstrom, founder of Diversified Financial Solutions at 631-758-8691. That's 631-758-8691 for a conversation about my most important client, you. Hello, and thank you for tuning in. You are listening to The Financial Chick Show, and I am The Financial Chick. My name is Denise Snowstrom, the CEO and owner of Diversified Financial Solutions, a full-service independent financial planning firm located in Medford. I'm here live every Friday from 5.30 p.m. to 6 p.m. on 103.9 LI News Radio. Your Financial Chick is here to help you make better financial decisions and choices to improve your life and reduce your anxiety and stress about money. I'm sure today was uh, a day filled with uh, some anxiety and uh, maybe a little bit of stress, too. Uh, It's been quite the week in the marketplace. Um, So if you have any questions on anything uh, about the market, uh, you can always check out my website at financialchickshow.com. I'm also on uh, Facebook at Diversified Financial Solutions. So like our pages and get updates and see what is happening. So as we know today, uh, actually the whole week, it's been quite uh, quite an up and down. As we've been talking about every single week, we, we talk about the the roller coaster ride of the market. Uh, the Fed's making things a little bit sketchy lately um, with interest rate hikes. You know, with inflation, they're kind of scrambling. Everything is kind of hitting the proverbial fan at this point. And um, you know, everything was down today, including good old cryptocurrency. Uh, that's been hit too, and they're indicating that uh, with cryptocurrency uh, regulation and interest rate hikes are definitely uh, sending that into a spiral. So it's not time to panic. Uh, as we've been talking about for weeks, it's time to definitely look at your portfolio and check things out. Um, but uh, just stay put, enjoy your weekend, and next week things will look brighter for sure. So there's not a lot of good news in the market. So I have someone on the show with me today to give us some news, um, some good and maybe some not so good. But uh, it's going to be all about New York State. So I'm happy to have on the show with me today my assemblyman and good friend, Joseph DiStefano. Joe, are you there? Hi. Hey, Hi. Joe. How are you? How are you doing? I'm doing okay. It's been quite the week, for sure. <laughs> How's your week going? Good to be back on your show. It's great to be back on. Yes, I'm so glad you're here. Thanks for uh, for taking the time. I know um, you have a busy schedule and everything's going a little crazy, so I do appreciate you taking the, some time out of your schedule. You're welcome. So I guess, you know, because we had a rough week with the, with the market, um, I'm, I'm going to start with um, some two good things that, that are coming down the pike. So maybe you could talk a little bit about it. The first thing would be uh, the library that uh, is coming. So you want to talk a little bit about that? I certainly do. My, my favorite thing to talk about. Yay! <laughs> uh, a, couple, a couple of years ago, I had the good fortune of introducing a bill to alienate some property uh, that the town of Brookhaven donated to the Patchogue Medford Library. Uh, it's going to be located on the west side of Route 112 off Horse Block Road, where the Medford uh, Athletic Complex is. We did the groundbreaking uh, a couple of weeks ago on a Saturday morning. It was well attended by all of the organizations that made this possible. Uh, I was happy to be the assembly sponsor that brought that bill to the state, which it was passed and signed into law. And uh, it's going to be built within the next year i was i was told uh you know providing uh, supply chain issues don't hamper things right uh obviously they're still looking for some donations they're doing selling brick uh at a hundred or five hundred dollars a piece so your name will be forever enshrined into the library oh that's a cool idea uh, yeah and uh, it's a way of raising money we're still looking for other opportunities to raise money for the library they're approximately a uh, million dollars short but I was assured that it was not going to affect the library uh, bill as far as what you pay for your library services. 
Um, they're trying to get it without having to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's been a long time in coming. I've lived in my house for 50 years, and I can tell you every, bo- every bit of the 40 of them anyway, we've been talking about having a library annex in, in Medford. Yeah. Well, what do you think about it? I'm, I'm about. from Medford myself, and... Uh, you know, Patchog Medford District as a, as a whole is is huge. You know, we've always had the Patchog uh, Library, you know, on Main Street. Well, it wasn't always on Main Street. I actually, when I was a young kid, it was on the other street there, right by behind Reese's. On, I don't even know the name of that road. That's terrible. I've lived here my whole life. But <laughs> but you know, like we, we definitely need some representation. So this is really awesome for the for the people of Medford to have their own library now. I think that's great news. And congratulations to you for getting this through. And thank you so much. I appreciate it. And like I said, my, that was one of my uh, objectives when I first got into office three and a half years ago was to carry that bill uh, to make it happen. And uh, in my first year of being in the assembly, we were able to pull it off and uh, signed into law and we're, we're off and running. You pass by, you can see all the bulldozers and all the dirt dug up and uh, they started to get the ball rolling. Yeah, that's so awesome. That's so awesome. And then, of course, another big pressing issue that um, has been on everybody's mind and it's making everybody crazy, but I see things are starting to happen. And what I'm talking about is the road work on the Long Island Expressway. So do you want to tell our listeners a little bit about what's happening there? Sure. Um, I just, uh, there was a, we had a press release uh, yesterday, I believe it was, uh, where the governor, uh, to her credit, uh, gave the, uh, the Long Island Roadways, a hundred and fifty-seven million dollar facelift. Uh, the project is going to include paving of the Long Island Expressway from uh, the Nassau County border all the way out to Exit sixty-five. Amen. Uh, the reason, and they're saying that you know people were asking me. I get a lot of calls about you know why only to Exit sixty-five. Uh, people realize that once you get past Exit sixty-five, it's all cement from there on. Right. So. Uh, you know, it's all blacktop from up to 64, and then 65 starts the uh, the cement part of the expressway. A uh, long time in coming. Uh, you know, I can't even tell you how many phone calls my office gets on a daily basis about people who've blown out tires. Oh, yeah. I can only rims, imagine. Rims, front ends, uh, you know, and, you know, it's, it's, it's desperately needed. There was also money put into this year's budget to do road work. But, you know, you got to remember, that's the entire state. So whatever monies that were included in the state budget gets distributed throughout the state. Mm-hmm. This was specifically $157 million earmarked specifically for Nassau and Suffolk. Wow, that's awesome. I know, I just, I, I hold my breath because I, I I think we talked about this. I, I had two blowout tires. That's how I started my year. I had the run flats and uh, what didn't happen on Long, like, well, it happened in Queens, but, you know, I still, I, I when I drive up and down the Long Island Expressway, I hold my breath because I'm so nervous and you have to be really looking at the road <laughs> to make sure you don't hit the gaping holes. So this is great news. And I'm sure everybody that's listening, especially those driving on the LIA Red at the moment, uh, are super happy about that. So yeah, and uh, we were sure we were sure that the the construction the reconstruction is going to start this week or next week. Um, you know, getting everything. Every, the hardest part about doing all this is mobilizing and getting mm-hmm. the, the people in place to get the the stuff done. You know, to get it rolling. Um, so that's what that's what's in the the process of being done right now is getting people mobilized to start the work. Right. Well, it's good news just to even know that there's forward mo- momentum and, and things are happening. So, uh, like I said, I'm sure everybody, there's not one person who said, now, of course, you're going to have people that are going to be upset because now, you know, the roads are going to be closed. You're going to have to go off on the service road. <laughs> you know, there's going to be some, you know, where they call pain before pleasure, so to speak, you know, like there's going to be some pain until everything kind of gets back to normal. But um, it's something that we've been waiting for for a long time. So that's awesome news. And, and, and that is true. And, and that, that's one thing I'm going to ask your listeners to, to have is a little bit of patience. Mm-hmm. Because, as you said, my hope is that they do the work overnight where there's less uh, traffic, right. uh, which generally generally does happen for the most part. Right. There's going to be times in the daytime when they have what they call that uh, mobile uh, you know, work, road work and stuff where they, you're following the, the trucks. They have a couple of lanes closed, and uh, especially in the HOV lane. Uh, where they kind of do the garbage pickup and all that kind of stuff where you have to follow behind them and, uh, and at least one lane, possibly two lanes are closed. Right. So I'm asking, you, I'm asking your listeners to please have some patience. We all wanted this. We're all going to get it. Uh, just please have some patience. Absolutely. Absolutely. And just plan, you know, plan accordingly. You know, you might have to leave a little bit early or, you know, take a different, uh, you know, and, way to go to I'm work or do, whatever. But 
And Denise, what, I, what I'm going to do is when, um, when this thing starts getting more into the final stages, I'm going to ask the Department of Transportation to send me a link to the road work uh, time frames on when they're going to be doing certain things. And I will absolutely post that everywhere oh, I can, you know, social media so people will know that they're doing the expressway from 44, uh, 49 to 52 or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, just be ready for it because I think if you're, if you're educated as to when they're going to be doing the work in whatever area they're going to be working in, it does give you that opportunity to make an alternate arrangement. Absolutely. And people do that. People track their uh, their routes with traffic and stuff like that. So it's just looking at it a little bit differently and knowing that, you know, this is going to be a positive thing, but it may uh, just change your, your lifestyle a little bit, you know. So we're, we're heading the, in, uh, hitting into the break. I'll get there. It's been a rough week, Joe. <laughs> we're going into the break, but please stay tuned. I'm here with Joe DiStefano, the Assemblyman, and we're talking about the state of the state, uh, New York State. And you're listening to the Financial Chick Show. So stay tuned and we'll be back with more. Welcome back. This is Denise Nostrom, the financial chick, the company's diversified financial solutions. You can visit my website at financialchickshow.com. I'm here to help you on your financial journey. Over the years, things change, and I'm here to help you navigate all of those changes. Today, we're doing something a little different. We're checking out uh, some things that have been going on within our state, New York State, and I have on the line with me Assemblyman Joe DiStefano. Joe, you there? I'm still here. All right. I love it. Thanks for staying staying with me during the commercial break. <laughs> I appreciate it. Got it. So um, actually, while the uh, commercials were going, my husband had uh, jumped in and he had a question about that road work we were talking about before the commercials. And he wanted to find out if you guys are going to or the, the road work is going to entail the on and off ramps. Do you know the answer well, to that? Here's the issue with that. And uh, yeah, I would just say for the most part, it will. However... There are certain things that we all have to understand about the, uh, the on-ramps and off-ramps. The on-ramps are controlled by the county. The off-ramps mm-hmm. are controlled by the state. Interesting. So we, we're going to have to come to some, you know, I will talk with our county legislators uh, to discuss the areas that are, in, are affected by, because every exit, you know, from you know, the beginning to the end has an on-ramp and an off-ramp. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I will have to talk with our county legislators to see how we can cut, try to put that all together. Because uh, I have found out in my years of being on the transportation committee for the state uh, that the on ramps are controlled by the county, the off ramps are controlled by the state. Wow, it so seems so complicated. To get that dialogue together. Right, yeah, right. But you know, yeah, it's something to uh, to consider. But I don't think a lot of people know that. I didn't know that. So, uh, yeah. so sometimes just knowledge is power, right? I'll, t- I'll tell you everything I know. I love it, Joe. <laughs> so we went into the good. And of course, you know, it's the good, the bad, the ugly, right? So I guess we'll go into, um, you had indicated that budget time has just ended and uh, the budgets are out for New York State. So you want to talk a little bit about that and some things that uh, have transpired or what's going to come down the pike? Yeah, I mean, you know, we all know that New York is one of the highest tax states in the country, uh, our Adopted budget that was just passed a few weeks ago was $220 billion, which is a 3.5% increase over last budget. Um, it's $4 billion more than what the governor proposed and $6 billion less than what the state lawmakers wanted. So I guess that is the happy medium. Mm. Um, the problem, the problem uh, in the budget, the way I see it as a fiscal conservative, is that you're relying on a $12.7 billion emergency funding from the Fed that is a one-shot deal, and working in county government for as long as I, I had, uh, one-shot deals don't usually hold up, and now that 12.7 that we got this year is not going to be there next year. Mm. So what happens then when you don't have the, the feds you know, funneling some money into your state uh, budget? Now you have to find those resources, and I don't believe we have enough sustaining income to be able to overcome that $12.7 billion uh, emergency federal funding that was given us through the pandemic. Right. Um, the good news. I mean, you know, you, you got to take the good with the bad. I mean, Absolutely. that's what life is about. They can go with bad. Uh, in this year's budget, they were able to increase school aid by $457 million to school aid. Uh, we all know that the more state aid we get for the schools, the less it impacts the local taxpayers on their tax bill when it comes to uh, school taxes. That's which, good as news. We all know uh, 70% of our, our, our taxes, our real estate taxes, are covered uh, in, uh, in, in, you know, raising the money from the taxpayers. 
Mm-hmm. Um, the one thing, and you know, from a law, import, uh, law enforcement standpoint, which is where I, my life was predominantly uh, lived, is uh, they did absolutely very little to uh, address the bail reform issue. Uh, we were fighting for a total repeal. They threw a couple of little bones at us and said, well, you know, we'll, we'll give you a little bit of this. But it was really not, it didn't go far enough. Um, another little bit of good news is they, uh, on June 1st, they're going to suspend the sales tax on gas. Uh, from the state portion of it, uh, it's it's a little bit, you know, if it's 15 cents, 14 cents, whatever that number is, okay. uh, it's it's, more, it's a small price to pay. You know, you, you're getting very little relief. I think we could have done more, but the bottom line is it's a little bit of something. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we there was some money invested in the local businesses, which I think the U.S. being one of them. Uh, would would be able to uh, you know there, there's going to be some some programs that the state's going to initiate to uh, they put some money into small businesses uh, to help them along and, you know after the pandemic some people rebounded better than others mm-hmm. so they're going to do some more of that uh, another bad thing we're going to talk about is uh, six hundred million dollars for the Buffalo Bills for a new stadium for the uh, for the Buffalo area yeah uh, I heard about that paid for by the taxpayers they're going to be it's going to be paid for by the taxpayers uh, and that had bipartisan uh, yeah not liking. So it wasn't just like one side wanted it and the other didn't. Right. It, was, it was both didn't like it. But when you throw something into a budget, it's either yes or no. There's no, I like this, I don't like that kind of a thing. Um, and, you know, the one other thing we're going to get, especially on Long Island, I, I know it's, it's, a, it's a topic that a lot of people want to avoid, is the offshore wind. Uh, we're going to get uh, the, the windmills out in the ocean and on the, uh, on the, on the, on the, in the sound area. And, you know, we really do need to start thinking about alternative uh, measures for energy. We, mm-hmm. really, you know, we got to start thinking about, not that I'm a big, uh, you know, climate fan and all that kind of stuff. I'm not, the, you know, the, the Green New Deal kind of a person. But I think we got to start thinking about our environment and a better ways, cleaner ways of doing things. And, you know, it, it's going to be something that is going to be beneficial, maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but in the future, we, we do have to start looking towards doing things in, in a cleaner way. And I think that's definitely something that would, uh, you know, benefit us in the long run. Uh, $63 million for so addiction to, uh, treatment, recovery, and prevention on Long Island. Uh, mm-hmm. that, that's, I, I'm on the Drug and Alcoholism Committee. And as, you, as everybody who's listening probably knows, we do have a opioid problem. Uh, you know, it, 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 it's fueled by, you know, you know addiction. And, that's, and, and we, we're trying to fight that. Uh, and we did some. We did put some money in there to, to help battle some of those issues. That's great news because that is a big issue today. Right, and uh, you know, veterans. We always put money in there for the Joseph P. Dwyer Fund. Uh, that's uh, you know where you know our veterans coming back from from service who have depression issues and uh, suicidal tendencies uh, to help them out to you know find the treatment that they need. Uh, not to have to deal with that by themselves. Uh, very important thing. You know, veterans are near and dear to me. Uh, I, I try to, you know, recognize them every single chance I get uh, because without them, this country wouldn't be what it is today. And that's I true. Them, I salute them. And everybody that's listening to your show should do the same thing. When you see a veteran, thank them for their service because without them, we would not live in the country that we live today. I absolutely agree with that. That's a great uh, thing. So I guess it's kind of, if anything, a a mixed bag. Um, You know, obviously New York has its its warts and, (laughs) you know, we need to uh, overcome some things. I I, I like the whole thing with, you know, uh, with the veterans and the PTSD, but I I think really with our our children is is a big issue today. Um, You know, just speaking to my daughter and her friends and stuff and and just, you know, the mental health and and stress that these kids are feeling is, is just... I think we need to care more about the people. You know, the, obviously, the, we can't do it all, but um, it's it's really trying to uh, get it back offline. together. We, we've we've had a lot since offline, this COVID you thing. Have, offline, you and I have had this conversation uh, uh, about things like in the last two years. You know, the kids in school didn't really have to do a whole lot because they were not able to go to school. Yep. Now that things are starting to get back to normal, uh, now there's going to be more things that are going that the, the kids are going to have to do. And they may not be ready, depending on what age bracket you fall into. Yeah. Uh, you know, you, you may not be ready for that. You know, it's like, wait a second, the last two years, I didn't have to do much. Now you're telling me I got to do all of this. I don't, I don't know if I'm ready for that. Right. You know, and we got to try and ease them back in. But we also need to know that the kids are our future. They uh, are. These are our replacements. 
these are these are our replacements. I, I may have said it to you once or twice that you know there's going to be a future assembly member amongst us. There's going to be a future senator amongst us that's going to come out of this class of 2022 at some point in life. Yeah. Uh, they got to be ready for it. They absolutely have to be ready for it. And uh, I'm all about doing that. I'm all about funding the kids, uh, and I will always stand and advocate for their best interests. Yeah, absolutely. Again, a, it's, it's, we're in a, in a very interesting time, a very challenging time. But um, I think with the right people in place and just everybody, uh, you know, taking care of their little space in the world, we can we can make it make it good. Um, and you know, like I said, the, with the market, it's just, it's just really a little bit of everything. So we're going to have some bumps. I think it's going to be a bumpy road this year, but um, I think we will prevail. Uh, so we're running to the end of the show, but I want to thank you so much for, again for taking your time, Joe, and, and enlightening my audience about uh, all of these things that are coming down the pike. So it's, it's very beneficial information for all of us uh, that we need to know. And uh, I'll definitely talk to people about you know being patient about the roads because <laughs> it's a good thing. But we don't want we want to we don't want to make it become a negative thing, you know. But everybody have a great weekend. You're listening to the Financial Chick Show, and I will be with you again next Friday. Enjoy the weekend. Advisory services offered through Blackridge Asset Management, LLC, a registered investment advisor. Securities are offered through Peak Brokerage Services, LLC, member FINRA, SIPC. Blackridge Asset Management and Diversified Financial Solutions are separate and independent entities from Peak Brokerage Services.